so that's why <clears throat> if you go to Mexico, um, and I know there are some bad examples uh, in terms of Mexico that we, we have also benchmarked and seen some of the things we must avoid doing. So Mexico has the levy. If you go to our neighbors, uh, Nigeria, they have a levy. China has a levy. We can give you, I have a whole study that is actually uploaded. Uh, if only we can download and read. The entire benchmarking study has already been given. Now, and, and the, I think the, the Honorable uh, Co-Chair, you asked a very fundamental question. Uh, that, that the cost of establishing a manufacturing plant in Kenya is expensive. Now, um, but I also think, if, if that is a statement of fact, it is incumbent on us as leaders to change that. Because um, manufacturing does not just happen because you wish it. Manufacturing happens because you have a concrete plan. And that concrete plan must be driven by a demand for something. If there is no demand for something, there is no private sector person who is going to risk their money. Uh, but I'm just going to manufacture doors and wish and hope that the houses will be built. The market, as the, 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 my, my senior has said, it needs to be nurtured. So we are nurturing the market. Okay, by creating that consumptive demand, which is then going to anchor our manufacturing and is going to give us jobs. You know, I dare say that the existential risk of our country today is this issue of unemployment. This must be in every other word that you talk about as members of parliament. We must talk about how do we solve unemployment. And sometimes we put aside our whatever caps that we are wearing so that we can, it's a patriotic duty for all of us to find a solution to this thing called unemployment. You may disagree with how I want to do it, I may disagree with how you want to do it, but let's not run away from the fact that it is a big problem. Now, some statement was made about why don't we take this money and build classrooms? And I, I find that quite interesting. Because which money are you taking? Because the, unless you're saying that the housing levy application should go to building classrooms, the reason why we have this housing levy is because there is no fiscal space. There was no other way of funding this agenda. So you needed to come up with a plan to be able to get that capital. But let me assure you that our housing plan is not just about four walls and a roof. No. It is a whole ecosystem where we are building schools close to where people live. One of the reasons why we have traffic in these cities of ours, Nairobi, is because our cities have grown in an unplanned way. We have built schools in one end, we live in another end, and we work in another place. That's why we have perpetual jam. So what are we doing? We are making sure that all these homes that we are building, there is a school within walking distance. So go and look at all the affordable housing programs that we have launched. We have a school, we have a clinic, we have a market. Why? Because this is about human settlements. It's not just about housing. So I think that's a very important point for all of us to be able to appreciate. Um, then uh, I, I really feel uncomfortable to try and take on my former boss. Uh, Eugene, on, on something that I, I, I don't think is a statement of fact. Number one, Jubilee government never abolished its affordable housing program. Never. I was a PS in charge from day one to the last day. And until the last day, we were still chasing our housing agenda. And I actually want to use this as a very good example as to why we did not succeed and why we are succeeding now. And it goes to, there is nothing that has changed in the architecture. What has changed is that right now, we have got the resources to do it. In the last uh, government, we didn't have it because it went to court, it stayed in court. By the way, the courts never ruled. It stayed in court, it was frustrated, there were like 13 cases being opened every day. We know how it works in Kenya. But then eventually, the former president in uh, uh, December of 2019, I remember very well because it was Jamhuri Day. He directed that we move it from mandatory to voluntary. Now, let me tell you what the effect was. The effect was we had projected to be collecting somewhere between 6 and 7 billion a month. But between 2019 to 2022, 
when Jubilee government came to an end, we had not collected more than 1.8 billion. Mm -hmm.